Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and I'm going to go back to our suggestions. Now, this was a suggested video by Janet, and it her YouTube name is D E L G A D O J M A R. And she said, What about some stacked cascading? envelopes using junk mail i think that's what she was talking about now i have never ever tried this before but we're going to give it a shot and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to make each one a pocket i'm good i think i'm gonna have to think about this for a minute y'all are seeing you see my brain working see all that smoke coming out um, I've got a few junk mail envelopes here. I don't have many because I have used so many of them lately. But um, I need to give this a little bit of thought. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... And I've got some that I've inked on or whatever. And that doesn't matter because we're going to um, close them up and cover them anyway. Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I think I'm going to go ahead and close all these up. And then we'll kind of go from there. I hope y'all don't mind seeing my process and my brain working. Because sometimes it takes my brain a while to get going. All right, let's see. And it is raining here today and cold. It's turned, well, it's cold for us. It turned back cold again. We had a couple of... 80 in the 80s days and now we've got cold and like 60 something so my allergies are having a field day so if i sniffle a little bit or sneeze a couple of times i apologize it's just going to be one of those days all right so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to start out with my longest one and i'm just going to let this be my longest one since this is the shortest now i did choose some that were the same width but i don't you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to and hmm, i think i will well they're close to the same width anyway i think i will cascade hmm, i probably will come up Let's just come up about an inch on each one of them. That'll give us a nice cascade, I think. And these you could add to your junk journals, your mini albums, lots of different things. So we're going to need to cut that one off right there. So I'm just going to grab my trimmer here. This is going to be a full-fledged watch how she does it video. <laughs> I'm not going to cut very many parts out. Okay, so that is that one. And then on this one, let's come up another inch. And I'm hoping all of this turns out. If you're watching this, you know that it worked. And it, <laughs> if you don't see a video from me today, you know this didn't work. Uh, let's see. There, we need to cut that one right there i'm just going to cut them over here to the side that way i won't have to keep bringing my trimmer back and forth all right so we've got that and then we need to come up another inch on that one and i'm i'm not being real picky about it i'm just kind of bringing them up through there doesn't have to be exact and somebody said they really uh, in one of the comments that they really liked me saying that it doesn't have to be perfect and we need to get us a little logo on that don't we it doesn't have to be perfect this is just paper I mean what could go wrong the worst that we could do is mess it up and then it's just junk envelopes so we could just throw it away all right, there is the inch on that one, and I think we can, let's see, I don't think that one's big enough. No, we can do this one here. You know, even those people that, um, oh, I'm going to cut. You know, I haven't been paying attention as to what end I'm cutting off, but I need to start, don't I? I'm going to mark this in. Um, 
even the, the people who run those big businesses and make all of the, you know, books and different things, that theirs are not perfect either. Have you ever been reading a book and you find a word that's misspelled in the book? I have lots of times. Theirs are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Nothing is perfect. So, even if it's store-bought, it's not perfect. A lot of the time, store-bought is very imperfect. All right. So, I think I'm going to put one more. And then I think that's as small as I'm going to go. Because that's going to be kind of little. Okay. So, that would be our last one. We'll just put these aside in case we mess something up. Okay, now, what I did is cut off of the end that's open, as you can see, I think, almost all of them. Yes. So, all of them have a closed end. All right, so we've got that done. And now what we're going to need to do, in order for this to be a cascading flip. Now, we need to be able to flip them up so we can see the back, I think. Or at least that's the way I did my cascading. We're going to score at one half inch on all of these. And we're scoring on the open end. I'm not sure why right right now, but that's just what that's just what I feel like I need to do. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I may wish I had scored on the other end. Uh, we're scoring on the open end at one half inch on all of them. Okay, and of course this one doesn't have an open end, so I think we'll just cut one. I'm just going to cut a tiny bit off of here. Just a little, little bit. And then we'll score on that. Oops. That's a whale. Hmm, okay. All right, now I don't know where I'm going to go from here, but we'll see. I've drug out all my scrap, or not all my scraps, but a lot of my scraps. Now, this, of course, is going to go like this. You're going to need to fold these over. Now, I've never done a cascade anything without it being inside of a mini album or something like that. So we may have to end up attaching this to something so that I can um, kind of get my bearings. Well, I don't know why that one will not fold straight. Let's just force it. There we go. And then the baby one. And I'm just giving these a fold right now. I know that we'll probably come back and do something to them. Okay, we would start off with this one. That one would go down. Then you would put your second one down. And that little one may be too small. We may end up doing away with it. Then you would go under there and you would put that one down. And then under this one down. And under your last one down. So let's see what kind of what that looks like with me holding them. Well, that's kind of what the cascading is going to look like. Now, I do need to have something to attach this to. So what I'm going to do is just kind of make me something. It doesn't matter what because I can always cover it. Uh, I'm just going to get kind of a sturdy piece of paper out of here. That's long enough. That looks pretty right there. And... All in all, these are about eight and a half. Now, for those of you who like to see a real slick and quick um, YouTube video with all the preparations and everything done <laughs> this is not going to be for you 
this is definitely not going to be the video for you because oops because i don't have anything prepared three and seven eighths is what that needs to be um uh, that's why we're just kind of going with it all right i'm going to make that a little bit wider than three and seven eighths because i think one of my envelopes is a little bit wider and i am going to cut it down a little bit let's see eight and a half let's cut it down to nine inches that's going to be kind of a big piece to put in our journal but it could go in a large journal or it could go in a large mini album something like that so this is going to be our back piece this will be the piece that we glue all of these to now what I want to do is cover these first before I start gluing them, them down on here. And I'm just going to cover them with my scrap paper. Uh, I'm not going to worry about if the paper... I'm, I want it to all kind of coordinate, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be exact. Just something that kind of matches. So let's just grab out some papers. I like that. That's pretty. Okay, I have just pulled out some odd papers that would kind of go together. So we're going to start. Ooh, that's not going to be wide enough. We're going to start covering these. And I'm not going to cover the part that I've got for the flap. I'm not going to cover that. No, I'm just going to cover the part that's going to be seen, this part. And I might, I'm still debating on whether to use this one or not. It's going to be so tiny, I don't really think you would be able to do very much with it. I may just lay that one aside. Okay, let's start with this one. So this is going to be large enough to do that. And I'm going to cover mine with a full sheet of paper, I think, and then maybe come back and do something on the top. I don't think I'm going to collage these, but you could always do that if you wanted to. I, I love the collage look, but some people don't. So I think what we'll do, so I think what we will do is just put some glue on here. and lay these pieces down and then we'll kind of see what we've got and see if where we need to go from there so let's see which way's up that way's up Okay, so that's that side and then I'm just going to trim these off at the at the edges because you know me I'll probably ink mine up I like the ink on there okay so I've got that one covered but I'm just going to flip it over and we'll go with this side and I'm going to use a different paper I think That's not going to be wide enough either. Let's see. I think I'll just use that, and I don't mind using that with the little uh, stripe at the top. That's fine with me. That doesn't bother me at all. So let's just use this one on here. I may have to drag out more papers. I didn't realize that some of these are not going to be wide enough. But I have plenty of scraps, so that's not a problem. Okay, we're just going to press that down.
and then we'll trim it off. So there is our first little cascading part right there. Now, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to open up one side and I'm probably going to open up the right side and have it where you can tuck something in there. So I'm just going to shave off just a tiny bit of that, just enough to open up that envelope. And I may have to shave it with my trimmer to get it straight. Let's see if that opened it. No, I don't think that opened it. All right, so let's just lay it in there flush and then we'll try to trim that off just a little bit. And if this works, then we will do all of our envelopes that way. Let's see. Grab my bone folder. There we go. So we've got a pocket there on the side. Now I think I want to punch to so that you will know that that's a little pocket. I think I want to punch a little pull tab there. So let me grab my punch and we'll do that. Okay. We got that little pull tab there and now we need to put just a little bitty piece of paper in there so that you can't see that um, that envelope in there. So all I'm going to do is stick this in at, a, at an angle like that and then just trim it off once it's glued. That's how I made a mini album years ago by using envelopes like this and I needed to cover that inside just a little bit. I didn't even worry about cutting my paper the right uh, width. I just kind of stuck it in at an angle, pressed it down, make sure my glue didn't go past that, and then I just flip it over and I trim this off like that and there you have that inside covered and it's covered just enough that nobody will ever know that this was an envelope See? so just stick it in at an angle don't worry about trying to cut it straight all right so there's one with the little pull tab so let's go ahead and cover another let's cover this one that's pretty isn't it Ooh, that's gonna be pretty on there I like that. So let's put this on this one. This is pretty. And grab out your envelopes and work along with me. Just pause the video and just work along with us. That would be fun. Okay. So there's that side covered. That's pretty. I like that. Now we need to cover this side. And... This is just not wide enough, and I don't want to put it, nope. All right. This is pretty, I like that. That covers this side with that. Isn't that pretty? I like this side too. It's got the little nursery rhymes on there, or the little songs, not nursery rhymes. I don't know where I got that paper. I've had it forever. Yeah, it's got Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, London Bridge is Falling Down, I'm a Little Teapot. They're cute. Okay, let's do that. We'll go ahead and trim it. Okay, and then this will be our top, so we need to open this side right here. Okay, we have that one opened up, and this one I think is a little bit, 
Yeah, it's just a tiny bit narrower than that one, but that doesn't matter. That's fine. And we're just going to kind of eyeball the center. Now, don't worry about this top part up here. It's not glued yet. We'll glue that when we start putting it all together. So don't worry about that right now. Uh, let's just eyeball it. There we go. And then again, we need to put something down there. So I think I'll just glue these little birds in there. That will be fine, I think. I might even glue the that side. So all I'm going to do is put a little bitty, bit of glue up at the top. I'm not going to run it down too far because I don't want it going past my paper. Because I do not want it gluing my envelope together. See, that's all I'm going to do right there. As long as this is covered good, that's all we need. And then our envelope still opens up. Okay, so there is number two, and now we need to work on this one, and I think I'm going to try to open this up before I glue the papers on there. Might make it a little bit easier. Let me see if this trimmer will do it. Yep. I don't know if it's, this one's too long, I think. So let's grab this one. I'm sorry I'm having to switch around with so many different items here on you. I try to put as much in front of, or as little in front of the camera as I can because I know how distracting some of these things are, but... It just all depends on what I can use. I keep trying to use that paper and it's not wide enough. All right, let's find something else. So that should give us plenty to choose from. So let's start with this one. Let's glue this one on here. And I really, let's just, just try this one. Let's see if that's long enough. No, it's not. And You know, I don't think it would matter. I don't think it would matter which way we put it. So let's just do that. I like that paper. And this is going to be kind of a floral scene here. Most of them have got flowers on them. So let's just go with this. There we go. Just make sure you don't go over that little fold up there at the top. That score line. Pull that down some. Man, that glue sticks fast. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to trim this a little bit right here because I went a little bit too high. There we go. Which side did we open? There we go. We opened that side right there. So I just want to make sure that I get the paper on the right side. And let's go with, well, let's just go with this rose paper on the back side. And I may just speed this up a little bit. Um, I don't I, I know that you guys know how to cover paper so I may speed this up just a little just so that it doesn't get boring for you I don't want to bore you so let's go ahead and put our little hole our little pull tab in this one and again just kind of guesstimating so I'm going to cover this one with the butterflies I've been hoarding this butterfly paper for a while but it's time for me to use it up, or at least use a piece of it. And I think we'll just put this piece on the back. This is a little bit glittery. And it is a pretty thick paper, so hopefully my punch is going to punch through this. 
Okay, now we've got to go back and put something under here. I don't want to put that. Let's just grab this little piece. Yeah, that'll work. Let me trim that off. I think I cut that wrong. So we'll open that up and just put a little glue at the top. It only needs to glue right at the top. Here we go. Just like that. And then we need to punch our pull tab in this one. And then put a little piece down in there. I think that little green will work. Okay, we have them all covered. And now it's just a matter of starting to put them together. All right, I think I'm just going to use this side of the paper. I love that side, but that's going to be really bold if we use that side. So I think I'm just going to use this side of the paper and start my cascading. And then I can also use those little lines. Hopefully they're straight. I can use those little lines to um, be able to put that down. And then we'll decorate once we get... And then we will decorate once we get all of this put down. Now, I'm going to use score tape. Um, that's just what I'm used to using when I do cascading. But you can use regular glue if you want. Now, I did cut these at a little bit of an angle. Just because it makes it easier. And they don't show on the outside. So, on your very first one, you're going to put your score tape on the top. So, see, that's, that's like the top. So this is going to be my front side. And then I am just going to start it. Let me see. If I, I'm going to have to kind of hold it up where I can see. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little bit of art glitter glue on top of that so I have just a little bit of wiggle room. Because this is going to be a little bit harder than just laying them down in an album. There we go. I think that'll work right there. So we'll press that down. Now on the inside right here where you have that piece that's not completely put together, glued together, just go ahead and add some glue in there. You can add it before or after, it doesn't matter. So you've got that little piece covered. Now we can come back and put a little piece of, of washi tape or paper or whatever on that. So don't worry about that right now. Not going to worry about that part at this point. So our next one's going to go, it's going to butt right up at the end of that one. And I think I'm just going to do score, I'm, I'm just going to do art glitter glue. It'll hold it and I'm a little bit skeptical about putting these down with the um, score tape right now because <laughs> I don't know if they're going to go down straight or not let's see if that looks pretty straight yep so the top one's a little bit larger than that one but i don't i don't mind that i don't mind that at all i'm going to be able to still use it and put tickets and tags and things in there so that's not going to bother me i'm going to go ahead and glue that down just glue it together just like that and make sure that's pressed down well and then we will flip this one up. All right, we're ready for our next one, which is this one. And I like to kind of dry fit them in there just to make sure that I'm getting kind of straight, straight as possible. All right, we'll hold that down. Using the envelopes is not quite as easy as using just cardstock because cardstock stays folded pretty well. The envelopes are a little bit flimsy when you don't have the paper on top of them. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I like that. 
So we got that down. Let's go ahead and glue this together. Now, if you are a stitcher, if you sew, you could uh, stitch around these. That would be pretty, you know, stitch on top before you put all this, uh, cut all that apart, but you could stitch around those. That would be really pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and glue this down. Oops, glue that little piece down too. Okay. So I'm going to use my bone folder, make sure everything's kind of folded, glued down. Okay, so that's what we have right there. Let me see, this one looks like it's a little bit crooked. Let's see if it is. Okay, there we go. That's what we have. That would be cute inside of a little album wouldn't it you could always even use that just to put on the over a page and let it be a little slide over your page that's cute now I want to go back and cover this because I don't like the um, that paper showing I don't like that showing on the front let's just grab some washi if I have any the right color I don't know if any of this washi will work or not that could work it's kind of got that color in there and this one I think is kind of old so I'll probably put some glue under it yeah it may not even tear off right there we go let's see if it's gonna cover it yeah it'll cover it so let's put a little glue down under there first I want to make sure it sticks and sometimes when your washi is a little bit old it doesn't stick well and I'll just trim it off when it dries a little bit whoops I definitely need to be using this one this one is so old it won't even come off of the roll Need to use this up. Okay, let's pull it slowly, slowly, slowly. There we go. And just need to burnish your washi down really well so it doesn't hinder your pages flipping. And then you can just trim it off. So there we have that. Now we need to make some tags to put in here and what else? Uh, decorate them a little bit. So let me see if I can lay some of this stuff aside. I've got so much stuff pulled out. Okay, I got this lace from a sweet friend of mine. And I'm going to show you the other pack the other things that she sent me in the package. But I'm going to put this right on here it has it had the sticky already on the back of it i like that i've never had any lace like that before so we'll trim that off i like that there that's pretty and i don't think it's enough to go on another one no but we could put it in the center and then put something else on there so let's just do that we'll put it in the center and then we'll just put something on either end of it. I like that. Then I have these little things from Tim Holtz. But these are kind of busy. So they will need something under them. Before I put anything else down. I love the vellum on there. It's got the little stars on it. Uh oh. Something fell. It kind of mutes that and, and keeps it from being so bright. I like that part. So let's see what we're going to do. I also have some papers that I have sprayed. I can always use old book pages. Put some things like that down. I 
I've got a basket of little flowers and things here that we can use. So let's just try a few things and see what we, we want to use. I kind of like that. Hmm. Well, kind of like that. Now I'm just pulling out some things. I have no idea how many of these will make it on here. But I'm just pulling out some things and kind of laying them around and see if I like that or not. This is just my little hoard vault over here. And I know I'm almost covering up all that paper, but I'm still using some of the same colors, so that's okay with me. You don't have to do that. That's just, that's me. I love these little tickets. They're pretty. And if you kind of put something similar on each one, then it makes them blend a little bit more. Makes it look more uniform, like you used all the same paper and all of that on, the, on them. And you just kind of keep adding and, you know, you take away, add and take away. I had someone yesterday say, I, I wish I knew how to put things together like you do. It's not, I mean, I just learned it by watching other people. And, you know, it's not anything special. I mean, I just start laying it down and if it looks good, I leave it. And if, if I look at it and it doesn't look too good, then I pull it up. That's exactly how you do this kind of thing. Let's see. I'm just kind of flipping through this little box here. I've got all kinds of things in this little box. I love, I love my little box that's got all kinds of goodies in it. Let's see. Okay, I think it's time to start kind of laying some things down. I'm going to kind of open this up and dump it out and see what we've got here. I've looked through some of them, but I haven't looked through everything. And these may be a little bit too muted to use on here. We'll see. These are the Tim Holtz Tiny... What is this? Uh, snippets. That's what this is. Tim Holtz Snippets. So it's just the small things that you can use. Okay, I think on this top one right here, I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to go with this doily. I'm going to put this down. Like that. And then I do want to put a piece of book page under there. I told you guys I love my book paper. And I've got to show you some new ones. Well, they're not new. They're old. But some more that I got in over the last couple of days. I have to show you. I'm just going to put that right there where I'm going to put the flower. Kind of at the, at the end where the flower is going to go. And then I think I'm going to put this just right there. I'm going to let that hang off. I'm not going to worry about that hanging off a little bit. So we'll lay him right in there. You can still see the doily. You'll be able to see the background page. You can see that, that paper, uh, the book page. Now, I may have to use a different kind of glue to put that on. Sometimes my art glitter glue doesn't like to glue flowers down. We'll see. We'll hold that just a second. Well, it feels like it held pretty good. Now we can make a ticket to go in the side there. I'm not going to do a lot on the back. If I do anything, it'll just be something like this. Like that. Because... Um, the back of this, you know, it needs to lay down pretty flat. So I'll take my old book paper, ink around it just a little bit. 
All right, so that's all I'm going to do to the back of that one. And then on this one, and I'm not going to do a lot under where, like this one's going to fold over, because if you do, they're not going to lay down flat. So on this one, I think I'm just going to put this butterfly on here. I may put a little Tim Holtz piece on here, like that. It's flat, so that won't hurt. Just kind of lay that down there. You'll still be able to see my background paper, my flowers, all of that. Put this little flower right here. And then we will put this butterfly right here. And I will have to glue him down all the way just so that he doesn't hinder my other pages. But still, you, you can see everything. I can't wait now to use this in my journal. Love it. And on, on this one, I think I put my little birdies upside down, so I need to cover most of that. Mm. I didn't even pay attention when I was laying that on there. So we will just put a good size piece of book paper on there. And then put lay something else maybe on top of it. Remember when you turn your paper up, these need to be the right the right way up. So okay, put that there. That'll cover up most of my little error there. And then let's just stick a little ticket up there. I, want, I didn't want to cover my little birdies up, but I don't, they're upside down. I don't want them to fall out of their little nest. So we're just going to stick that there. Put that a little bit more at an angle. And then I thought I might have a bird in here, but I think it's just butterflies. I don't think I have a bird. So let's put this little butterfly down here and he'll hold those little birdies in their nest. I don't want my little birds to fall out. There we go. So that's good there. And then on this one, I think all I'm going to do is just decorate a little bit down here at the bottom. And this little tag just says, ooh la la. And I think that it, no, maybe it didn't, yeah, I think it come with this paper pack, actually. Wait, before we put that down, we're going to put this little piece of doily down right here. Then, I'm going to put this down, right over that. And then this flower will go over here on this side. And I'm getting out of frame, so let me move it up. Like that. There we go. And I may put, later on, put a little journal card or something there where, that you could journal on. So we may do that later on. Right now, I'm not going to, not going to do it right now. Um, I think on this one, I'm going to make a journal tag to go there. I was looking to see if I had one already made. I don't have one made this size, but I'm just going to make a little journal tag to go there. And if I get it made, I'll take pictures of it and show it in the video. But I think that's what I'm going to do on that one since it's kind of large and I want something to be able to journal on. And then on this one, we've got that little piece of the lace that was sent to me by my special friend. And then we're just going to put this little ticket on there that says smile and it's got a little butterfly on there. And I think on this one I'll put a little journal tag too. And then on the back of this one, hmm, I may make another journal tag to go on the back of this one. Because I'm not really seeing anything there. So I may just make another little journal tag and I probably will make it out of some book paper. Let's see. Let's see what we got right here. Oh, I think that'd work. Let's just cover this with some book paper. 
And you can always write on the top of book paper. You know that. So it doesn't have to be blank for you to be able to use it because you can write on the top of this. You can write right over all of that. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to glue this on there. Yeah, then we'll trim this off. I'm going to use just a little piece of this tea dyed paper that I have. And then we're going to put that as a little imitation pull tab. It's not going to be, you're really not going to be pulling it from anywhere, but then we can put that down right there. And I, like I said, I can always journal on top of that. So let's just do that. Let's put this on top of that, like that. And then I want to put this down. I still feel like it needs something underneath, or at least coming out the side. Okay, I have this dolly that um, I have... I think I actually dyed this with, hmm, what did I dye that with? I am thinking I dyed that with ink, just ink. Okay, I'm going to ink around the edges of this. And you can let pieces hang out too if you want. They don't have to be the same width. They can hang over the edge. Because you're going to use this in your journal, so it, it can be different widths. Okay, let's put that right there. And now, all we need to do is make the little tags to go in each one of these. But I may do that off camera, because you guys know how to make the tags. But I'll pull them out and take photos of them, so that you can see them at the end. But um, I think that is super cute. Thank you so much. Who did? Who gave me this idea? Uh, June, I think. Let me look again. No? Janet. Thank you so much, Janet, for this idea. That is super cute. I love it. And I would have never thought about doing this had you not suggested it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to give you a flip through of this little um, cascading junk mail project. <laughs> I don't know what to call it yet. Anyway, this is a little flip through since I went ahead and finished it and put my tags and everything in there. But that's the top one. And then there's the back side. I just put some vintage lace on there and some book paper. And then this has a little tag in it. Tag. And these this paper is a front it's a digital kit and it's from My Porch Prints. That's that paper. And it just slides down in there and has the little tab sticking out. And then this is the, the second one. And I just put a little bit of lace right there. And I think you saw me put the rest of this down. And then this one has a little tag in there as well. And I just cut down some of her uh, tabs that she had in her kit. I just cut them in half for the smaller ones. And then there's the back side of that one. And then on this one, I went ahead and put a little vellum up here just to kind of break all of those flowers up and put another little tag and a piece of my tea dyed paper there. And then here is the tag for this one. And it's quite a large one. Let's see if I can... Everything's not completely dry. That's why I'm kind of being careful right now. All the... There's still some glue and things that are drying up. So that's that one. I put a little piece of vintage lace right there. And then here's the back side. I put a journaling tag here. This is a little Tim Holtz um, piece, snippet piece. This is a little Tim Holtz snippet piece. It's like a little uh, postcard. And then I put a little piece of vintage lace right behind the tag. So that's that one. And then I put a little journaling tag here with some old book paper behind it. A little piece of lace up here at the top that looks like it's a pull, but this is glued down. And then some of the Tim Holtz snippets around there. 
and then this is a little tag that was in my stash and a little flower and then there is the big journaling tag and on the back these are completely clear so you can do lots of journaling on that and it just slides right back in there just like that like I said I've got things that are still not completely dry so I'm trying to just work real careful all right, and then on the back of this one, I covered this with an old book page. I put a little doily under there. I can still write on that if I want to. That's just a little piece of tea dyed paper that I tore and a little Tim Holtz snippet there. And then I went ahead and covered that paper with just some of my, um, this is some of my uh, ink dyed paper, I do believe. I think that's what this is. But anyway, it's some of my dyed paper. I went ahead and covered that to make it a little bit more... Uh, pleasable to the eye it was a little bit bold to be behind all of this I did leave the back like that because I'm going to probably glue this down to my journal if I don't glue it down then I'll cover this probably with something too I did put a little bitty tag right there that's one of the Tim Holtz snippets I put that right there and I'll probably put a little number or something in that but that is it that is what we made today all right, we will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Don't forget the challenge. All the information is below.